It's a great pleasure for me being here in a spirit center in the United States of America to speak about spiritism in English. I want to apologize because my English is Cearense English. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank the invitation, our dear Jani and Desio that we met on the next, last Monday. And it's uh, a great pleasure to me, a great honor to be here to speak to you. Tonight's subject, we're going to speak about the self-forgiveness happiness with no guilt. So I want you to raise your hand whenever I speak something that is not clear for you or whenever I create a new word that doesn't exist. <laughs> I want you to be very severe but not rude, only severe, because we want to improve our, my English skills. <laughs> and then I will need your help and some moments of the lecture I'm going to stop and to ask help of my friend, your name? Eddie. Eddie. He's going to be my guardian angel tonight <laughs> and uh, I hope we be well succeed in this lecture. When I read the book uh, Tormentos da Obsessão Torments of Obsession, I don't know if it's already translated to English, by the spirit Manuel, Manuel Filomeno de Miranda, through the psychography of Devout Pereira Franco, I was very astonished. Because in that book, Manuel Filomeno de Miranda tells us many cases of spirits arriving at the spiritual world in very bad conditions. Even presidents of spirit centers, speakers, famous speakers, very popular mediums, arriving in the spiritual world in a very bad situation, in a very bad condition. And then I was wondering why, why people who knows Spiritism, getting the spiritual world in such bad conditions. <coughs> and this spirit, he says that there is no one obsessing them in the spiritual world. There are no enemies. But the only, sp the, 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 the spirit involving himself in his own energies, with guilty feelings, remorse, perfectionism. There was no one hurting them, only themselves, out of obsession. And then I was trying to understand that. And then I seen in many lectures, some seminars, some books, I've listened to Divaldo's seminar Perdão e Auto Perdão Forgive and Self-Forgiveness One of the greatest lectures of Divaldo In the books of Spirit Hamed by the medium Francisco de Espírito Santo Neto and other books by the spirit Hermance do Fou by the medium Vanderlei Soares de Oliveira, and especially in the Gospel of Jesus, we found many explanations, many tips to help us to not get into, into the spiritual world in bad conditions. And we could see that the most popular cause was the guilt feeling. Many spirits arriving there with feelings of guilt. <coughs> And why is that? And we're going to see that even today we have a lot of people suffering of guilty feelings. In my state, in my homeland, in Ceará, there are still today 
There are many priests, many religious peoples, weeping themselves in self-flagellation, self-punishment, like the suffering should be good, should be, should be pleasant to God. And the suffering is not pleasant to God. God doesn't punish us. God does not condemn us. I want to ask you, whoever had been in a job session meeting, raise your hand please. Did you ever see any spirit saying that God is punishing him? Did you ever say, see that any spirit say, God is punishing me? No, God does not punish us. But you have this culture of the guilty nowadays, even nowadays. And the spirit Samuel, our instructor, spiritual instructor, he said, Nazareno, when you say that to the audience, they will be astonished to, to think that even in the 21st century, we may have some people weeping themselves. But tell the people of the audience that many of us do exactly the same. Not, not, no, no more with whips, but with our faults, with our guilty feelings, with our perfectionism. And we need to forgive ourselves. We need to understand that the man was not created to suffer, but to love and to be loved. We are not here to suffer. Joana de Angelis tells to Divaldo Franco that, tells Divaldo that the flowers, they bloom only because of the the sunshine. When the sun raises, they wake up, they bloom. But the stones devout, the stones still need the dynamite to wake up. We are those stones. We need the dynamite to wake up to love. We need the dynamite of suffering to wake up, to cure us our huge pride, to cure our blindness, so we can see with the eyes of love. We can go back to, to God. We can to re return to God. Then we are not made to suffer. God does not punish us. And even in the Gospel according to the Spiritism, this extraordinary book that I owe my life to it, to this book, I should commit suicide if I, could, I hadn't read that book, certainly I would be deaf at this, at this moment. But even in this book, some messages, some passages, two of them only, you're going to see spirits saying that God punishes, that God condemns. Why that did it happen? And Divaldo Pereira Franco, in the seminar, Divaldo responde number two, Divaldo answers number two. He says that it was the way that that spirits, which were from the Middle Age, knew how to speak. That that was the usual way to speak of them. Because the spirits of the Gospel, according to the Spiritism, were from the Church. Who were them? I want you to help me. Some names of spirits that wrote messages in this, the Gospel according to the Spiritism. Matthew, Matthew. Saint Augustine, Saint Paul, Saint Vincent, 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 Saint Erastus. Erastus, which was from the church. Saint Augustine was a doctor of the church. Uh, Adolf, Bishop of Argels. John, Bishop of Bordeaux. 
priests, bishops, doctors of the church, teachers of the, the church. Then in these two passages, maybe the spirit or the medium let these words escape. God punishes. God condemns. Only two messages. And that God doesn't punish. God doesn't condemn. It is on the question 13 of the Spirit's book. Let me read for you because it's better than CRIC English. <laughs> the Spirit says that God is eternal, infinite, unchangeable, immaterial, unique, all-powerful, sovereignly just and good. Sovereignly just and good. So God does not condemn, God doesn't punish. But we punish ourselves. The question 621. Where is the law of God written in the conscience? So, it will be the conscience of guilt that will condemn us, or will be the conscience in peace that will absolve us. God doesn't condemn Divaldo, in the seminar, Estudando a Depressão, he asks us, how can the supreme intelligence of the universe punish the ignorance. How can the supreme love condemn our simplicity? Am I clear? Mm -hmm. You keep smiling. <laughs> Am I clear? <laughs> then we need to understand that it's very important. Because our remorse, our guilty feelings, if we die on this condition, we're going to suffer in the spiritual world. We need to forgive ourselves. Jesus used to ask us to love even the enemies. Shouldn't we love ourselves? Of course. The great commander is love God and love your neighborhood as yourself. If you don't forgive yourself, how can you love yourself? We won't. We won't be succeed on this. So we need to forgive ourselves. And the happiness, the joy, is it an, an attribute of the spirit, the superior spirits? Or we need to be sad, to be serious, to be always concerned? What do you think? Is happiness an attribute of the good spirits? Mm -hmm. I want to, to hear you. Yes. Yes? Yes. In Fortaleza, I used to be medium of transport. Transport. Transportation? Transportation medium. Transportation medium. I used to pick the speakers in the airport take them to the, to the hotel, <laughs> take to the seminar, then back to the hotel, then to the airport. I was transportation medium. <laughs> and I had the honor of knowing many of them very closely. Divaldo Pereira Frank, with 78 years old, a very joyful man very happy, looks like much more younger than he is. People, where he stays in somebody's house, sometimes the problem because at 6 a.m. the vow the wake up smiling. It's ready. And the people is <laughs> still, how can I say that? Sleepy. Sleepy. Sleepy, yes, sleepy and he's smiling. What is a paradox? Divaldo used to say that the man is the only animal that does not sing when the brother's son comes. 
Every animal. The birds sing when the sun comes. The flowers bloom. But we wake up complaining. Bad mood. There's something wrong with us. We need to change some things. And then the other other ones, José Haltechir, in the same way, it's very uh, nice person. He used to play some jokes in his seminars. Isaías Claro, which is who is a persecutor of justice in in Brazil. Frederico Menezes from Pernambuco. Alberto Almeida from Pará and many others that I had the honor to meet, they were always happy person, happy people, very joyful. How Teixeira used to say that Chico Xavier, the Brazilian's greatest medium of all times, used to be a very happy person. Chico loved to tell cases, to tell, to tell simple jokes to the people who were around him. How the Shira says that we could hear the Chico's laughs. Laughs? Gagalhadas, risadas? Laughs? Laughs. Laughs. From outside the house. From, from the sidewalk. You could hear Chico laughing. He was a very happy person. And sometimes uh, people used to ask him, Chico, why what is your big, biggest happiness in this world? So my biggest happiness is being medium. Something that I can understand. Because I see many people who is medium, who are mediums, that don't like being mediums. Forgetting that the mediumship is something neutral. It's not good, it's not bad. It's just one more sense, like the vision. You can see the war, the hungerness. You can see many bad things, but you can see the flowers. You can see the children. You can see the sea of Ceará, <laughs> my homeland. The eyes are not blamed, but we can choose. And the medianship is going to be a a wonderful tool to help many spirits, many spirits that were suffering, that were uh, in revenge of the time, suffering, because who is revenge is not happy. And through the mediumship, through the, this obsession meeting, they are helped. They meet their mothers, their family, that many years ago they couldn't see. They become our friends. Bezerra de Menezes, when arrived in the spiritual world, he, when he woke up, he listened to many voices calling his name. And he asked, Sister Selina, what is that? She said, Bezerra, come to the window. Took him to the window, where he could see a hundred of spirits that came to pay homage to say thank you to that one who was the doctor of the poor man's. To that one who was a doctrinator? 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 Yes. New Spirits words. In Federação Espírita Brasileira. Helping many spirits. And uh, so we, want, we should not be worried about being medium, but should be glad of having this opportunity to help other people, incarnated and disincarnated. When I was going to become, a, when I was studying to be a, a doctrinator, my mother, which is Catholic, Catholic, she was very concerned. She said, Neno, are you going to be a doctrinator? Don't do this. You're going to speak to the evil spirits? Don't, my son, don't do that. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's not dangerous. And then a good spirit has 
Como é que é? Whisper. Whisper in my ears. He said, Mommy, we should be afraid of doing the evil, but never. We should be afraid to do the good, to do charity, but to do the evil we should be afraid of. And that's true. When we sow flowers, we're going to harvest roses. So we don't we shall not be afraid of that. And many other lecturers, all of them are very happy that I have known. Even Francis of Sisi. The Divaldo tell us that when he went to the desert, he went to speak with the Sultan Saladin. It was the time of the Second Crusade. And Francis of Sisi, which was very brave, he went to speak to the Sultan Saladin to ask for peace. He went there. The Sultan, who spoke French as Francis of Sisi, liked him very much and said, Francis, I like you very much. I will give you a free pass to return to your home, to return home, but I want you to send another Francis like you to be with me. He loved the Francis of Sisi. But in the travel, in the desert, Francis of Sisi acquires a, a disease in the eyes, infection in the eyes, trachoma, which was, had no treatment at that epoch. The only treatment was to burn the person's eyes with an iron on fire. And Francis of Sisi comes to town in front of the Bishop Guido and around his friends. He falls in his knees and prepares to receive the treatment. And at that moment, when the iron is coming, burning, he doesn't complain. He doesn't say anything bad, but he speaks these words. Benevenuto fratello fogo, welcome, brother son. Please be gentle with me. I always have been gentle with you. And when, while he has his eyes burned by fire, he sings the good qualities of fire. Brother Leo, his friend, fall, desmire, pass away, no, passed out, pass out. Imagine the suffering of Francis of Sisi while he was singing all the good qualities of fire. And all his life was like this. He even been married with sister, sister Purnas. Purnas. I want you to correct me, okay? <laughs> even suffering cold, hungry, asking for the, for the need ones. He was always singing. In the moment of his death, his, br his brothers had to ask him, Francis, please be quiet. <laughs> because the people are coming to see you, to say goodbye to you. And if you keep singing, they won't believe that you are dying. <laughs> and he was singing. To the brother sun, to the brother wind, to the sister moon, to the sister death. He was the singer of the nature, the singer of joy. And gave us a wonderful example of life. So, every good spirit, every superior spirit, at least the lecturers, the speakers, are very joyful people. So, Spirits should be happy. Dejal Margot, 
a, a, a speaker from Bahia, he used to say that if one spiritist is sad, there are only two causes, two possible causes. Or he is with a very hard, very strong spiritual obsession, or he must be very hungry. <laughs> Because spirits, says the Valdo, they don't smoke, they almost don't drink alcohol, but they eat. <laughs> they eat a lot. We... Uh, compensate. Yeah, we compensate in food what we don't do in other areas. <laughs> So the spirits have to be happy people. We should not, not be condemning ourselves. We should forgive us. Why is that? Because God knew that we are going to, to make mistakes. Yes, in the question 13 that we just read, it says that God is omniscient. Omniscient? He knows the, the past, the present, and the future. And if He wanted us to not to, to make mistakes, He would create us perfect angels. But no. He created us simple and ignorant, without any lo no knowledge. So, we are learning through the million of years God knew that it was going to happen, that we were going to, to make mistakes. But we need to forgive ourselves. Because if you don't let the past, on the past, we are bringing to the present life, to the present moment. And the spirit who is attached to the past cannot walk towards, cannot do progress. Need to let the past go away. And somewhere, my spiritual friend, he said, Nazarene, I want you to forget every single thing that you've done wrong here when you die and you reincarnate as child, as children, in the next life. Aren't you going to forget everything? And I said, yes. Isn't it for, for you well, for you good, for the for the best of you, that God allows that, that you forget everything? Isn't it in a good purpose? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then he asked me, so ask the Spiritists to forget now what they've done wrong. So it would be, it would be much more easy to us here in the spiritual world to receive them. <laughs> because they come in a very bad state, bad conditions. Forget now. It doesn't matter what we've done in the past. If we are responsible for our past, you are lords of our tomorrow, of our future. Is it correct? Our what? Our master would be better? Master. Yes, we are master of our tomorrow. So let the past go by. Let's start over. The invitation of gospel is not for suffering, is not for remorse, is not for condemnation, but for working on good, for doing charity. Not only the material charity, but the moral charity, which is the most important for us. It's on the question 886 that I'm going to read it once again. What did Jesus really mean when he used the word love for charity? Three things. Compassion for everyone. Tolerance for the imperfection of others and forgiveness of all offenses.
unconditional forgiveness. Nazareno, mas, but it's so hard to forgive that person that hurt us. Why should we forget, forgive them? They, do, they don't deserve it. We need to forgive them. It's our trial is to forgive them. What do you mean, Nazareno? Didn't we say that God is omniscient? So he knows, he knew that everything is going to happen, the wars, the crusades, the inquisition. But if God is sovereignly just and good, he does not allow that innocent suffer an evil, suffer a bad thing. Zerhal Teixeira says that that on earth they are unjust, but there are no injustices. Injustices? Did you get it? Yes. Keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can see that in this world we are going to see many good people, not angels, but good people, and a lot of bad people evil ones. You're going to see that in our earth there are many criminals. And why does God allow them to be together? Why doesn't God put all the good ones in a planet, all the evil ones in another planet? So it would be okay, wasn't, wouldn't it be? It's true. Why does He allow the goods the good ones to be with the evil ones together. Because it's going to be, in the future, there's going to be this division. Is this, this is the version of the Spiritism about the final judgment. The, the good ones will remain on earth, but the bad ones, they are going to, to be sent to another world. And then Allan Kardec asked the spirits, why does God allow us, the bad ones, to be together with the good ones? And then they say, for the bad ones is very useful, because they learn with the example of the good, the good ones. They receive their mother's love, they receive the orientation, the education of the father, the friendship of his brothers and friends and he has a chance to get better. Maybe it's the last chance of them to reincarnate here in the earth, on the earth. And for the good ones, why is it useful to be together with the, the bad ones? And the spirits say, because they Yes, they can practice charity and love. It's our trial, it's the trial of the good ones, is to receive the bad ones, to receive the evil, to suffer. And then we said, oh, I'm innocent. Probably not. If God is fair, He does not allow an innocent suffer something that He does not owe it. Then I used to ask when I go to some small spirit centers, I used to ask for the audience, did, you, did anybody here ever created chickens? Chickens. Yeah, you did? Uh, when you created chickens, did you used to let the chickens together with the foxes? No. Oh, no. Chicken with foxes? Don't match. And why God allow us in this world the chickens with the foxes? The wolves with the sheep? Because the sheep are not that good sheep ones, though. 
<laughs> you know that sheep very white, no? You are that gray sheep. <laughs> have uh, clouds, clouds, yes, and teeth very sharp, very sharp teeth. Yes. teeth. If you touch them, they run. They bite us. These chips of today were the wolves of yesterday. And they are suffering what they did in the past. Normally is that. Because we accept the, the trials that we're going to have in this life, the most of them is on the question 258 of the Spirit's book. Two hundred and fifty-eight. Before incarnating, does a spirit for we see what will happen to it in his little life? Yes, the spirit plans the kind of trials it will undergo. It has full use of its free will. So if I'm going to suffer that evil, why am I going to be hurt with that person? I, I've chosen that. Am I going to be angry with Eddie? If it wasn't Eddie, it would be Gilberto. If it wasn't Gilberto, it would be someone else. Because we chosen that while we were in the spiritual world. And why would we choose a bad suffering in this earth? Because we knew that it would be necessary for us. That it would help us to learn. Because it's not uh, enough just to listen that it's good to be good. It is not enough to make us angels automatically. The Bible, the Gospel, is, is there uh, 2,000 years ago. We are not practicing them. We read the Gospel according to the Spiritism, the Spirit's books. It does not make us angels. We need to introjectar. How could I say that? Introspect. Introspect that education. Yes, that learning. You know? It's like if you... Francisco de Espírito Santo Neto tell us that is. It's like to try to tell someone how is an apple. If, she never, if the other person never ever ate an apple, you can say a lot of things, but she won't know. She needs to look, to smell, to bite, to digest. Then, oh, now I know what is an apple. Just, just cannot just listen. Oh, it's not... It's very important, Nazareno, that you do not betray your wife. If you just say that, that is not enough. Sometimes I need to be betrayed and so I hurt and I said, Oh, never Morgan, never again I will betray anyone. See, you need to introspect some learnings. And we need to forgive the other for the same mistake that we have done in the past. Forgive, so God may forgive you. Isn't that what Jesus said to us? So if you are suffering that, probably we have done the same act in the past. So we need to forgive. When I, when I forgive that person, I am forgiving me. I am forgiving myself for what I have done in the past. Uh, forgive, I have this in the, the Bible. Mm, I have a appointment here, a map of the Bible, but I... Aha! Uh -huh. Don't judge. Matthew 7, 1. I say and approve, you see, huh? <laughs> Do not judge, or you too will be judged. 
For in the same way you judge, you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You see? The Gospel was telling us that. So our trial is to forgive the bad ones. To love them. To give them a good example. But then in jail, yes, of course, because it's good for them. Because outside the jail, they are going to hurt many other people. They are going to increase their debts. So it's, it's, it's good that we put them on jail. But we should do this with love. Try to help, serve, educate them. That's why Jesus used to say then, it's Matthew 5.43 You have heard that it was said, Love your neighborhood and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than your others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. So Jesus asked us to, to forgive and to help our brothers. That's why, because if you are merciful, you're going to receive mercy. Jesus tells us the, the parable of the unmerciful serve. It's very beautiful. I want to read for you. It's in Matthew 18, 23. Therefore, the king of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began to settlement, the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents it was a very big, it's a very high value. It's about, about uh, 10 million dollars in the year of 1983. 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. And I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owned him a hundred denarii. A hundred denarii should be like a Ten dollars debt. He was forgiven for a ten million dollars debt, but he could not forgive a ten ten dollars. He grabbed him and began to shock him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what that was happening, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master 
everything that had happened. Then the master called his servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all the debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy of your fellow servant just ahead on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. You see how it's important to forgive. So, we're going to see that God forgive us everything that we do because we cannot hurt an innocent because he doesn't allow it. If we hurt someone, that's, that person was attracting that experience for her. The Spirit of Hamad says that, that our thinkings, our thoughts, attracts the experiences that we need to, to, to pass through. So, that person that we hurt, she needed that expiation, that education. If it wasn't us, it would be somebody else. I had a girlfriend. In the last life, she was my lover. I had a wife, and she was my lover. And then I hurt her very much. And she committed suicide because of me. Then, when I was re reincarnated in this life, I had a very strong depression because she was trying to revenge. But in spiritualism, we could help her. I even talked to her in a medium, this obsession meeting, and she forgave me as I forgave her. Then she asked me, forgive me because of your depression. I said, no, I needed that. Because with the depression, I cured my pride. I was a taste. I didn't use to, I, I used not to believe in God for 12 years. It was depression that cured my pride and made me open my eyes for the spiritual life. Then it was okay. But I was very, I was feeling a lot of guilty feelings when I found out that, that someone could have committed suicide because of me. Then the Spirit Samuel has told me, Nazareno, don't blame yourself so much. You were responsible, but if it wasn't you, it would be somebody else. That lady, she has uh, some affective problems, emotional problems. Did you see that novel, Mulheres Apaixonadas? Mm -hmm. You love novel, don't you? <laughs> Do you remember that there was a lady named Eloisa in that novel, Eloisa? She was very jealous. jealous? jealous. <laughs> the spirit somehow has a Nazareno. If Eloisa was dating even Chico Xavier, <laughs> she would be uh, angry with him, demanding, jealous, or some, something like that. There are some people that have this kind of problem and we need to watch out our relationships. And then it helped me a lot. And I realized that, that every, all of us we are learning, and God forgive us if no unconditionally. So, if you are going to make mistakes, it's it's natural. But we need to forgive ourselves and try to repair the evil. Nazareno, how can we repair the evil? It's done the question one thousand of the Spirit's book. One 
thousand. It's big. <laughs> but I'm just going to say what is important. It says that that only only the good actions repair the bad actions. Only good repairs the evil that we have done. Not suffering, not worrying, not crying on remorse, but doing the good. And the question 707a, it says that the best expiation is doing all the best that we can, all the good that we can, instead of the, the bad that we can do too. So this is going to be our invitation for you tonight. For not to be suffering or crying, but to start doing something good, start doing the, the charity for the good ones, for the, for the people, so we can repair our evil. Because Jesus used to say that because she loved it so much, she was forgiven. Because love covers over the multitude of sins. I have just wrote this, it's on the Peter's lecture. Peter's uh, Epistle 4 8. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. The, con the invitation of the Gospel is for love. The Spirit Emmanuel used to say that the good that we do here on earth is our lawyer and the spirit everywhere. So it's very important to do the good. And Alain Kardec never used the expression karma in the codification. Devaldo says that. He always preferred to use law of cause and effect. Because he wanted to tell us that our karma is dynamic. The good that we do here today changes our karma. So we need to repair the bad things that we've done with the, the good. Because if you are stuck on the past, we cannot progress. Cannot progress? Is it okay? Jesus used to say that the worker that, worker that takes the power and looks back is not able to the kingdom of heaven. You see? Take the plow and look back. It's worried with the past. It's not able to the, to the kingdom of heaven. That's why he told us about the children, the importance of living the present moment. And why are the children so happy and why, why are you so unhappy? Because they live the present moment. If there was a child here, what was she doing? Running, kidding, jumping. Do you think that she was, she, uh, she, uh, would she worried about the homework that she, she needs to <laughs> deliver tomorrow? Make no idea. If she is going to have money for the, for the, the school, for snacks, no. What clothes she's going to wear? Never mind. Because they live on the present. Then we need to learn to live on the present too. It's very important to us. We need to forget our past and to start again. Then a person can say, Oh, Nazareno, but I made a lot of mistakes. I have no salvation. <laughs> of course you have. Remember the parable of the workers on the vineyard. Workers of the last hour. Do you remember that? I didn't, I didn't mark it. But, uh, 
but Jesus tells that the ones that start working on the good today is going to receive the same salary of the ones who had started 10, 20, 30 years before. So you, you start today, tonight, you're going to receive the same salary. Look at how the gospel of Jesus is revolutionary. And we're going to see that in his gospel has two different speeches, very different speeches. When he is going to talk to the Pharisees, to the teachers of the law, he's very firm, very energetic. But on the other hand, while he is going to speak to the, for, for, to the sinners, he's always gentle. He could say something say some words about the sinners, but he never did it. Because he had a spiritual authority. But he never ever criticized any sinner by the teachers of law. That man that knew the scriptures, he was very firm with them. He used to say, I like that. It's on Matthew 33. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you. But do not what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. They wear on, the, on the, the squares, praying and pointing fingers, saying, you are wrong, you are condemned, I am the saint. They were making people feel guilty. That's why Jesus was very strong with them. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the king of heaven in man's face. You yourself do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. You don't enter and don't let the other ones who are trying to, to get in. Because they say, oh, you need to be perfect like this. The people couldn't follow all the rules. And Jesus used to say, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So Jesus was very firm with that man because they were very proud. But with the sinners, Jesus was always gentle. With the adultery woman, woman, adultery woman, what did he say to her here? <coughs> where, woman, where are those ones who are condemning you? He, she says, they're gone, sir. Then I don't condemn you to go and in the future, don't sin again, sin again. In the future, he says, in the future. Why did he criticize her? Could he? Yes, he could. But he didn't. Never. But he took the sinners to help him. Called the, the tax collectors to be disciples of him, which were hated by the Jewish Jewish. He speaks about the parable of the Good Samaritan, that were a people that were, were considered heretics by Jewish. He asked water for the woman in the 
Jacós, Poço. Fiancé? Who died of sadness? A very proud man. And Jesus touched his heart in the way to Damascus, in the desert, and makes him to become the biggest disseminator, the greatest disseminator of the gospel. He's, he disseminated the gospel more than Jesus. Imagine if Paul of Tars was blaming himself. He was going to be paralyzed. But no, he says, I will repair my, my, my faults. And goes around the world disseminating the gospel of Jesus. That time, there was no planes, there was no air condition, there was no microphones. Walking on the desert without money, having to work to have money. That is dissemination. And then, we're going to see that Jesus has exactly this meaning of helping the sinners. But in the spiritual movement, there are some, some things that are not very correctly explained. When I was uh, younger, I went to a spirit center, and then someone said to me, Nazareno, watch out. I said, why is that? Because to whom which is given so much, will be demanded most, more. How could I say that? You said good. No, but I want to be perfect. <laughs> I want my English to be Oxford pronounced. <laughs> and then I, I, I thought, well, for if, it's, if it's so, I'm in trouble. Because I've read, I have read a lot of books, I'm in trouble. And it always... Uh, I was always uh, worried about that. I, I couldn't understand it. Correct. And I said, is that that way? So if, if I study, it's worse. <laughs> Look at it. It makes no sense, isn't it? And then I went to study this. And we need to do like in, in the law. I was a lawyer before. Is there anybody here who studied laws? Okay, we're going to, to talk about umbral <laughs> before I leave. And then, when we are studying laws, we, can we interpret just a phrase? No. We need to read the phrase, but we need to see if it's according to the, to the chapter, if it's according to a superior law, if it's according to the constitution of the country, isn't that? We need to see who say that. Who is direction to? Direction? Who Address. is directed to? We need to see in, what, in which context? Context? Context. context. Yeah. I'm recording everything. <laughs> now you listen to this lecture and I'm going to improve my English. I, I appreciate you when you correct me. Yes. So we need, we need to interpret a, a, a phrase looking at all of this. So we need to find out who said that to that one who has given more, the more will be demanded. Who said that? Jesus of Nazareth. But who he was speaking to? Was he speaking to a, a sinner or to a Pharisee? To a Pharisee. So we need to to, walk, to look at this carefully because he was speaking to a Pharisee, to a teacher of the law. But was Alan Kardec the one who has given us the best interpretation of this phrase? In the Gospel according to the Spiritism, he says that for you, the Spiritist, who has been given more, it will demand more. But you, you will receive much more if you bem aproveitar. If you take advantage of this. Yeah. How could I say that? Yeah. 
speak very well. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, to hear. The, the, are you, did you understand? For you, Spiritus, who has given me more, you'll be more demanded, but you'll receive much more if you take advantage of this. Oh, Nazarene, why? No, why? I, I, can't, I can't hear anybody say that. I never heard. They only say the first part, isn't it? They don't say like Kardec used to say. Why not? You see, there, there, it happened, a, a, a true sabotage of the gospel, yes. The best words, the words that speak about happiness, joy, they were translated to more difficult understanding words. Who knows what, what does mean Evangelion from the Greek, Evangelion. Good news. Good news. Jesus has came to show us, to give us the good news. But there's a, a word in, in, in Portuguese which is bem-aventurado. In American, it's translated to blessed. Blessed the one who suffers because they will be consolate, consolate and so on. Who knows what means bem-aventurado? Or blessed. What does it mean? Felices. Happy. Blessed should be happy. Should be translated as happy. Happy the ones who suffer because they will be consoled. Happy the ones who are hungry of justice because they will be satiated. Satisfied. Satisfied? Satisfied is okay? Satisfied. <laughs> so, they change it. They, they, they put a word that I did not know the meaning, bem-aventurado. Galardão, which means reward. Jesus has told us many parables about the joy, about the rewards that we were going to receive he told us the parable of the sower that I'm going to read that is better. Matthew 13, 8. Just a little part of that. You know the parable. <coughs> He's speaking about the parable and says, Still other seed fell on good soil where it produces a crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. You see? The, good, the, 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 the seed falling on good soil produces a hundred for one. He speaks to us to tell us about the parable of the prodigal son that we almost never hear. Why not? For me, it's the most beautiful parable of Jesus. He tells us that the parable of about the, the lost sheep, too, is in 1812. It's very beautiful, too. We're just at the end. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of those little ones should be lost. So Jesus tells us that we are going to receive a hundred more times in the spiritual world than Him. He told us about many other wonderful passages that we just don't take a look at them because we, need, we prefer to look at the 
uh, hard parts. So, to finish, I was save my my friend, which is the lawyer. I am going to teach you to not be scared, to not be afraid of going to Umbrau, going to the Purgatory. How do you say Umbrau in English? Purgatory? Hell? The spirit is hell. Lower zone. Lower zone. Lower zone. Lower zone. I need to write it. That's very Lower zone. Lower zone. Okay. Lower zone. Lower zone. Okay. And uh, a very very famous speaker, Frederico, Men Frederico Menezes, he has spoke to us, he, he said us, you should not be afraid of going to the lower zone. Then people, why Fred? Why shouldn't we be worried? <laughs> then he said, don't worry because there in the lower zone, there will be a lot of people knowing, you know, there will be a lot of knowing people, you're going to see a lot of, of people of the spirit center. <laughs> you're going to be in the lower zone, you're going to see, oh, Gilberto, are you here? I said, yes, man, oh, what, can I, what could I do? And I said, oh, Jani, are you here in the lower zone too? Yeah, I'm afraid. What can I do? And so I said, don't be worried to go to the lower zone. Why should we be worried? And, but if, some, if I have died some years before, I certainly was going to the lower zone. Because I was going to be there, stuck on a... In the, uh, rest on a, a, a stone, crying, complaining, and said, oh, why didn't I listen to the, the people in the Spirit Center? Why didn't I say, I do what they did me to, to do? And, I, and the good spirits was going to be there in the lower zone. They were going to try to help me. But I was in a such a low vibration that I couldn't see them. Because the spirits that, that are in a low vibration levels, they cannot see the good spirits. But the good spirits may see them. And then the good spirit will be in my, by my side and I would, could not be, I would not be able to see them because I was very concerned with a lot of guilty feelings. But do you know what I'm going to do now? <laughs> if I'm going to the lower zone, I've told my family, I want to, I want to be buried. buried. Uh, I want you to put, uh, give me a, a target. Target? Yeah, a tag. Uh, written worker. <laughs> so when I go to the lower zone, the people are going to say, Nazareno, are you here too? <laughs> I said, oh, yes, but I'm a worker. <laughs> I'm here to work. <laughs> Why should we be just sitting there and complaining, crying? No. If you are there, let's work. Let's do lectures. Let's uh, study the spiritism, study the spirit's book, uh, give healing passes, and so on. Let's try to help the others. Why are you going to be stuck in the the complaining and suffering. No. Bloom wherever you are. That's the world. Then we, we should see that Alan Kardec used to tell us that the, the lower zones of the spiritual worlds, they are a state of mind. They are a state of conscious. Many people here in, the, in this earth is living on the lower zones. And the other people, they are living on spiritual worlds. Johnny is in Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. And then we need to see that if God is the supreme intelligence of the universe, as in, is, it's written on the first question of the Spirit's book, we need to know that if you are going to spend some time in the lower zones, it's good for us. It's going to be good for us. That's all right? Yes. But we know more than, than God, isn't it? Oh no, I know more than God. No, if you're going to do that, it's going to be good for us. In the, in the book, Nosla, Spiritual World, 
Astral City. André Luiz, the spirit says that he spent 80 years, 8 years in the spiritual world, in, in the lower zones. And it was very good to him. He says that he put off from his mind a lot of toxics, a lot of bad things, bad thoughts. And so he, he went out of the lower zones much better than he went in. Chico Xavier used to say to that ladies that used to be around him, Oh, I'd like to go to heaven when I go, when I die. But he, in Portuguese, he said, I'd like to go to cell. C-E-U. Mm -hmm. And the ladies that were around him said, Oh, Chico, when you go to cell, remember us? <laughs> and I said, Oh, I, I think you didn't understand. Seal, cell, C-E-U, it's a, a sigla. Acronym. It's an acronym. 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 Yes, acronym. It means Centro Espírito Umbralino. <laughs> Spirit Centro of Umbral. <laughs> Then no one else said anything. She wanted to, to work as medium in Umbral. Look how different we are from of Chico Xavier. Then, my friends, don't be worried about being umbrow. I know that no one here is going to umbrow. Oh, <laughs> yes, you are disseminators of the gospel in America. <laughs> How can you go to umbrow? No. <laughs> If you are going there it's for to work, to help the others, <laughs> of course you will. But then, is there a lot of lawyers over there? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to meet all your friends. <laughs> Just kidding, my friends. We're going to have to finish because of the time. And I want to tell you that uh, it was very good to be here with you. I felt very comfortable to speak. And uh, I hope that Jesus, hope that good spirits help all of us to work on good, to help other people to speak about his gospel as a letter of joy because Jesus was truly a happy person. God bless us. Thank you so much. <laughs>